What's up, my fellow contractors? It's Luis Gonzalez, the instructor of Contractor State License Preparation. For those of you who do not know me yet, I have over seven years helping thousands and thousands of contractors obtain their contractor's license here in the state of California. Please go to our YouTube channel. You guys will see hundreds and hundreds of videos of different contractors who were able to obtain their license in their own words. We are the only contractor school in the state of California that has live testimonials from our students. But if you follow us on Instagram, we post their picture, their license number, verifiable proof that people are passing here with contractor state license preparation. No other school in the state of California goes to the extent that we do to really show you guys that it is possible to obtain your license with dedication, right? That's one of the most important things. You guys have to sacrifice some of your time and dedicate yourself to the material. Everyone is busy. So if you're, if you're a contractor and you're tired of working for someone else, if you're a contractor and you're just working under the table and you don't see a year after year after year progression, maybe it's time you try something different and really obtain your contractor's license. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take some time to show you guys what information will be on the state exam and I'm gonna tie this information back to what we show you in the courses. So I'm gonna show you guys first and foremost how to obtain this study guide. It's very easy to obtain the study guide. Everyone can obtain the study guide. It's not hard at all. So this is how we do it. We're gonna go ahead and go to the CSLB website. Um, this is the Contractor State License Board website basically the state department that issues all the contractor licenses in the state of California. It is impossible to obtain a license if you're not applying through them. Some contractors tend to get confused, right? They go to the city and they register a business name and they think that is the license. No, that is simply an entity. They registered a solo ownership or they did a fictitious name. The only way that you can obtain a valid contractor's license in the state of California is by applying directly with the Contractor State License Board, okay? So in the search bar, you're gonna go ahead and put Law and Business Study Guide, and you should see what I see here, where it says Law and Business, Contractor State License Board, License Examination Study Guide. And we're gonna go into detail on what information will be on the state exam. So it says the law and business uh, exam is divided into eight major sections. Number one, where it says business organization. Now this one is really important. A lot of contractors do not realize that contractor licenses, California contractor licenses, are not issued to them individually. They are issued to the type of entity that they will register. This is a point that is lost on so many people. They don't realize that licenses are not issued under their name. They are issued to the business entity that they are registering. I'm gonna show you guys how to also look up this information, but again, this is something that we cover in the course. Chapter one, page six, we discuss this information in detail, and in chapter five of our courses, we actually discuss every single entity, what the benefits are, what the negatives are. So it's really important, you guys, that you understand what information really pertains to the license. There's so much misinformation out there, and now that we have an actual study guide that we base our books off of, we really hyper-focus on the, on the information that will be on the state exam. So business organization, which is 10%, company organization, they are talking about the entities, the corporation, the partnership, the LLC. Now, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of an example here, right? So many contractors, so many people out there, they watch a couple videos on YouTube and they're, and they're like, well, Luis, I want to go with the LLC. I believe the LLC is the best entity. All my friends tell me the LLC is the best entity. All the accountants, the tax preparers, all the recommendations say LLCs are the best entities. Luis, I want to register an LLC. And I always tell them, look, what I would do is 
pull up your book. Let's go to the Contractor State License Board website. Let's type in LLC in the search bar, and you're going to realize that for any other thing, any other type of business, LLCs are great entities. But when it comes to construction here in the state of California, LLCs are not recommended for construction, and I'll tell you why. If you guys choose an LLC as your entity in pure worker bond requirements, if you guys choose the LLC as your entity, the CSLB requires you to obtain a worker bond at a minimum $2,000 all the way up to $7,500 per year just because you chose that LLC. Okay, so for any other business, LLCs are great, but specifically for construction, it is not recommended. You are just, you're simply spending too much money in insurance requirements. But again, you're not going to find this information, you know, uh, just surfing the web. This is information that we pulled directly from the CSLB, information that will be on the state exam, and information that we cover in detail in Chapter 5. Number two, where it says business finances, cash management, budget and planning, taxes, financial reporting. This is 15% of the state exam. So what information do we cover in the courses and what information will be on the state exam? So for example, let's go ahead and break down taxes. There's going to be a couple questions on how often should contractors report their taxes. You're going to see this in the book on chapter 4, page 24, but we really go into detail that most taxes are reported quarterly. So if you don't know what quarterly is, it's three months. When it comes to budget, they're going to try to confuse you guys a little bit in regards to budget, but it's very simple. Um, once you set a budget, we have to try to stay within it, right? The budget is what money pool does your company have to invest in advertising, in salary? And you'd never want to exceed your budget, right? But we have to be flexible for unexpected changes, unexpected events where we might have to spend a little bit more money. In regards to taxes, we discuss FICA, we discuss FUDA, we discuss unemployment insurance, social security tax. This is information that we cover during the courses. So, for example, if you're just kind of surfing the web, oh, I need to know about taxes uh, to pass the law exam, a lot of people go too far, right? Now they become tax preparers. Look, in the courses, we're not going to show you how to become a tax preparer. In the courses, we're going to hyper-focus this intention so you can pass your state contractor's law exam. We're going to hyper-focus your attention to where you know what information you need to study to pass your exams. Now, what I would suggest is this. If this is the first time you're ever coming across any of our videos, take a second. Go to our YouTube channel. Look at the hundreds and hundreds of videos that you will see of our students, live testimonials in English and in Spanish. People that have passed with our courses. And I'll tell you this. If I can pass someone with 5 to 20% English, giving them classes in English and in Spanish, if you're a 100% English speaker and, and, and you weren't able to pass the state exam, it's, not, it's one or two things. Number one, you just weren't studying, right? That's, let, let's be real here. You just were not studying. Number two, you were not given the correct information to study. You were not given the information that is needed to pass your exams. Luckily, we work with our publisher. Our publisher and, and us as a school, we work together to really hyper-focus your attention on what is needed to pass the state exam. Yeah, I can give you books on books on books and, and pages and pages and pages of useful information that is, it is good to know if you're a contractor, but what good does that do you when you go to the state, the state, you sit down in front of a computer, and you're trying to pass a law exam? That's why it's important to, to know what are the most important things to know to pass your exams, right? Number three, employment requirements, employment regulation, evaluation, and record keeping, and payroll. Now, this is where we start making the change from employee to employer. That is a big change for a lot of people. A lot of contractors have what? 
5, 10, 15, 20 years of experience and they only see this information from the, the side of an, uh, of an employee. It's going to be a little difficult at first for contractors to make the switch. And that's okay. Now, the switch is from employee to employer. So what are some of the employment requirements? Now, when you are an employer, remember, you are responsible for the business. You are responsible to have workers' comp for your employees. You are responsible to run a payroll system for your employees, which means you have to know how often you pay your employees. Are you paying your employees on a weekly basis, on a two-week basis, on a monthly basis, right? Do you know what paperwork is needed to give to a new employee? For example, when an employee is hired, what form are you giving them? You're gonna give them an I-9 form to verify that they can work in the United States legally. As far as, for example, record keeping, let's talk about time cards. When you hire an employee, an employee's working for you, how are you keeping track of their hours? The days that they're working? How do you know what projects they were working on? It is your responsibility to have this paperwork on file. This paperwork will help you prevent lawsuits in the future from the numerous different state departments. And guys, trust and believe you will learn in regards to some of the federal departments and state departments. For example, in our courses and, and some of the questions you will receive on the state exam, there's gonna be questions regarding the CSLB. Who's the CSLB? That's the Contractor State License Board of California. What do they do? They regulate contractors and their businesses. Now, what about workers' comp? Who cares whether you have workers' comp or not? That's the DIR, the Department of Industrial Relations, and the EDD. What if you don't pay your taxes? A lot of people think, well, I don't want to get my license because now I have to pay more in taxes. Do you not know that the IRS and the CSLB, they're totally different, right? Because if you don't pay your taxes, who's sending you a letter in the mail? Who's knocking on your door? It's not the CSLB. It's the IRS, right? So trust and believe we will be discussing this during the courses. And again, it's really important to know where to focus your attention on. Number four, bonds, insurances, and liens. We're going to be discussing bonds, workers' compensation insurance, liens, and other remedies or other insurance. So let's talk about bonds real quick. In reference to the bonds, there's a lot of misinformation again in regards to the bonds. So for example, there's something known as a contractor's bond. This is the bond needed to activate your license. Okay, this is the bond that's needed to activate the license. This bond must cover you $15,000. Now, does that mean you have to have $15,000 in your bank account or you have to purchase a cash a cashier's check for $15,000? No, that is not what that means. It simply means it must cover you up to $15,000. How much does that bond cost you? That bond will cost you anywhere from $80 to $180 once a year. Guys, all my students here, every single student here at Contractor State License Preparation, we help them obtain these bonds. We work with different insurance companies, we refer them to these insurance companies that give them good prices, right? We're not just like, well, you pass your exams, good luck. No, we help them activate their license as well because I know when I was getting my license, the very first thing I wanted to do once I passed my exam was celebrate, number one, right? And then number two was, let me activate my license. How fast can I get this license? So we're gonna help you out with that process. Workers' compensation insurance. Guys, do you know when workers' comp is required? Workers' comp is required when you have one or more employees. And this is not just pertaining to construction. A lot of people believe, for whatever reason, it could be just not accessible to the information, but a lot of people believe that workers' comp is strictly for construction. And no, it really isn't, guys. Any business in the state of California that has one or more employees requires workers' compensation insurance. Again, we're going to clear all that information up. 
right? I'm, I'm the instructor. My name is Luis Gonzalez. I've been doing this for over seven years. And as you can tell, if you've already seen my YouTube page, I help a lot of people, right? I give them the information they need to know. You're getting someone that has the experience that is detailing this information out to you to where you can understand it. I'm showing you in the way that I was taught as a contractor, right? I can't just sit down and study a book and hope for the best. I need someone that is giving me this information, detailing this information, and telling me where to focus. That's what I'm going to do for you guys. Liens and other remedies. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say a client refuses to pay you when you are licensed. You can sue them directly in court as long as your paperwork is in order. Or you can submit a mechanics lien on their property, go to the court, submit a foreclosure lawsuit. If the client still refuses to pay you, guess what? The judge or the court can actually take away the client's property, sell it, force the sell of it in, a, in, in, the, in, the, in the auction or through a third party. They're basically going to force the sell of the property to recover the money that is owed to you as a contractor. But here's the thing, you guys. If your paperwork is not in order, you don't know how to fill out the paperwork. You don't know what paperwork to give as the prime contractor, as the subcontractor. Maybe you don't even know the difference between the prime and the sub. This is why the course is important because I'm going to tell you what the difference is between the prime and the sub. So let's say you are the prime contractor. What does that mean? What does I'm the prime contractor mean? If you're the prime contractor, you have a contract directly with the client. Your contract is with the client, which means on a residential property, you have to give something known as the mechanics lien warning. You are warning the client that if you do the work, as it's detailed in the contract and the client is refusing to pay you, you can place a mechanics lien on the property. So in your contract, you have to attach what is known as the mechanics lien warning. This used to be known as the notice to owner, right? Again, things we covered during the course. Now, what is the subcontractor? Unfortunately, in the construction world, a lot of people believe I'm just a subcontractor because I don't have a license. Guys, subcontractors also need to have a license. A subcontractor simply means that their contract is not with the client directly. Their contract is with the prime. So that's what it means to be a subcontractor. Their contract is not with the client directly, but it's with another contractor. That's where that word stems from, subcontractor contractor and then of course you're going to learn about other insurances such as the general liability insurance what is it for when it's needed when is it required by law when is it not required by law all of this information we cover in detail during the course number five contract requirements and execution bidding a lot of people don't know the difference between an estimate and the bid a lot of people don't know some rules in regards to bidding, right? And this is kind of where, as an instructor, as a person that has their license, as a person that has years and years and years of experience doing this, this is sometimes where we butt heads with the contractors because let's, let, if you're an unlicensed contractor or a contractor that doesn't have a lot of experience in estimating, you know, I mean, me working in the field for a while, I would see how some of these contractors would do their bids, how they would do their estimates. They would walk around kind of just looking, kind of figure out what materials they need, roughly how many days, and they'd be like, hmm, it'll probably take me, I don't know, maybe three or four days, maybe one or two employees. Uh, let's do it for $12,000, right? But they're not taking their time to detail out, okay, how much of materials, where, let me contact let me go to the Home Depot real quick to see how much those materials are. Let me contact the supplier to get a quote for these. Um, roughly how many days, if the project takes three days, I'm gonna put five days just to be sure, right? They're not taking their time. And the problem is when you tell a client a price and you try to change it on, change it later in the future, a couple days later, like, you know what, I underbid it, I'm sorry, that's not the price. 
It's actually $5,000 more. It's actually $10,000 more. You lost that client because the client is going to go off the first price that you give them. Remember, and that's just, that's just human nature. If, if I tell you, okay, it's going to cost you 4000 to do this, and then a couple days later, you tell me, you know what, I made a mistake, it's actually $8,000, I'm not going to trust you anymore, right? So it's, you're going to learn some of the bidding rules that you should follow as a contractor. And again, we discuss this in detail in the course. Contracts and payments. So in regards to the contracts, you're going to learn very, very detailed information in regards to what clauses must be added to your contracts, okay? Just to give you an example, did you guys know on residential properties, there's a limit to the down payment you can obtain. Down payments are limited to $1,000 max or 10%. Whichever is less is the key, you guys. Which means if you're a painter, a landscaper, a roofer, a general contractor, an electrician, a plumber, if your contract is $50,000, your maximum down payment is $1,000. If your contract is $100,000, your maximum down payment on a residential property is $1,000. But what if your contract is only a thousand? Can you obtain a one thousand dollar down payment? No, because in that specific example, ten percent would be less. Remember, whichever is less is the key, you guys. And we're gonna discuss this in detail during the course. It's not just reading the book. You have me explaining this information with energy so you guys can understand the information. Licensing requirements, business license, contractor's license, activity, regulation. How often do you have to renew the license? Every two years. What if you don't want to work the license right away? Do you want, do you want to put the license inactive? You have to renew that every four years, right? Um, what are the rules regarding advertising? What happens if I don't use my license, but I'm still working as an unlicensed contractor? I'm doing projects on the side. What can happen? You're going to learn all this information in chapter one. So you're going to learn certain information that pertains to the contractor's license. You're going to learn why that licenses aren't issued to you individually, why they're issued to your entity. What are some basic examples of when they can actually suspend, revoke my license, or give me a fine? So just for an example, guys, I'm giving you guys example because I want to educate you guys on what information we're going to cover in the courses and what information we're going to discuss in the courses, right? I'm not just telling you, okay, what is a bond? What is this? No, I want to give you guys specific examples of what we cover and what's on the state exam. So just to give you guys an example, if you guys are a prime contractor, you have seven days to pay a subcontractor. If it takes you longer than seven days to pay the sub after you receive payment, they can suspend or revoke your license depending on the how the gravity of the situation basically so if you're if you're screwing your subs over guys that's bad okay they can suspend or revoke the license so we're going to be learning this in chapter 1 guys 8% number 7 safety safety is a big big part of your examination Training and reporting requirements, general safety, hazardous unknown materials. Guys, we're going to learn about the IIPP program, the injury and illness prevention program. We have to have safety meetings once every 10 days. We have to adopt a program on how to train our employees in normal and emergency situations in regards to hazardous substances such as lead, asbestos, glue, paint thinner, Things that we will come in contact with at the job site, PPE equipment, when do we have to have our hard hat, goggles, hearing protection, all that information, guys, we cover in detail in the course, and those questions, 100%, will come out on the state exam. Public works, okay, public works is a big part of it as well. Public works, we're going to learn about prevailing wage requirements. Did you guys know that? If, as a contractor, we're going to be submitting bids on public projects, did you guys know you have to have certified payroll to prove you're paying the prevailing wages? Did you guys know that? What else do we have to know in regards to public works? We have to have the insurances. We have to have workers' comp. We have to have commercial general liability insurance. 
the director of the DIR sets the prevailing wages. And guys, prevailing wages change from project to project, trade to trade. So that is the law and business study guide broken down for you guys. But let's go ahead and go over some of the sample questions. And, and, and you guys are going to get a great example on how they try to confuse you. So what information must be included in a stop notice? So a stop notice, to give you guys a little bit more information, a stop notice is a notice that is used to alert the client that the prime contractor has not paid you. So this notice is either sent to the client directly, right, to alert them that the prime, the person that hired you, isn't paying you, or it is sent to the public department that is supposed to be paying you if it's a public works job. So it tells you here the correct answer is A, the kind of labor services equipment or materials furnished or agreed to be furnished. So basically in the stop notice, you're gonna put your company's information, the type of work that you did, the type of materials you installed, and what the payment is. Number two, within how many days must an agreement to arbitrate be returned to the participants after being mailed to, uh, by the CSLB? That one is D, within 30 days. We discussed that in detail in chapter one. And number three, according to the California license law, how often must safety meetings be held? Now that we already discussed. B, at least once every 10 days. We discussed this when, we, when, when we're talking about the injury and illness prevention program. All right, you guys, so that is the breakdown of the law and business study guide. Like I said, we can help you obtain your contractor's license here. Click on our channel. Click on our channel and you're gonna see all the students that we have passed. We are the only school in the state of California that goes above and beyond for our students. You guys are gonna see the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of student testimonials that we have. No other school has that and there's a reason for that. If you guys go on our Instagram, you guys are gonna see the student's license numbers. You guys can verify that on the CSLB website. We help people obtain their contractor's license here. That's what we dedicate ourselves to, okay? Me, again, my name is Luis Gonzalez. I have over seven years doing this. I can help you obtain your contractor's license. If you guys go on the videos, you guys are gonna see a lot of students mention my name because I am the instructor. We offer our classes online in English and in Spanish, and we like to have a conversation with every person first. We like to ask these questions because we wanna know what your situation is what your work schedule is, what is the course that is best for you to maximize your success. We're not going to give you guys some BS slogan. Guys, if you're not studying, you're not going to pass. It, it, it should be obvious, right? The reason why people give you those BS slogans is because they, they want to make it easier than what it is. I'm telling you guys right now, if you're not studying, you're not going to pass, okay? You're going to get out of this process what you put into it. So if you study, you're gonna pass. If you follow my guidelines, you're gonna pass. If you put in the work, you will be a licensed contractor. My information is at the bottom of this video. The school information is at the bottom of this video. The Instagram information is at the bottom of this video. Check out our channel, reach out to me, email me, call any of our five schools. We have El Monte, Anaheim, San Bernardino, North Hills, and Chula Vista. We've been doing this for a long time, you guys. We'll wait to hear from you. Good luck, guys.